Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're going to try to answer the question is a monogreen stompy a viable archetype in the best of one ladder since the archetype received a lot of new tools in Bloombrew starting with the one drops where we now have a valley might caller a 1-1 one -one trampling frog warrior picks up a plus one plus one counter whenever another frog a rabbit raccoon or squirrel enters under our control no squirrels in this deck but every other type is represented so we can pretty steadily grow the might caller over time then Paw Patch recruits a nice follow-up to a Valley Might Caller as a 2-1 Rabbit Warrior. Also has Offspring for 2 mana, so if we pay the additional mana we can make another 1-1-2 conversion of it. So that's a way of maybe triggering the Might Caller twice. Also tramples, and whenever a creature we control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, we can put a plus one plus one counter on a different creature we control. So that's another way of growing the team if our opponent tries to pick it apart with spot removal. And our final one mana creature is Evolving Adaptive, used to be the star of the show in mono green, but because it doesn't have any relevant creature types in this deck, we're down to just two copies. Then at 2 mana we have the Keen-Eyed Curator, a 3-3, three, three, so pretty decent stats, and it also gives us access to a bit of Graveyard Hate, where we can pay 1 mana to exile target card from a Graveyard, and if Graveyard strategies start becoming more popular as a way to maybe fight the Boros Tokens deck, then having some main deck Graveyard Hate is always nice to have, can maybe stop the various Squirming Emergence decks or other Reanimator strategies. And then as long as there are 4 or more card types among cards exiled with a Curator, it gets plus 4, plus 4 and not super likely to happen, but over the course of a grindier matchup we can potentially get a 7-7 Trampler, which is not too bad. And then we've got some powerful 2-mana class enchantments. Innkeeper's Talent synergizes with all the plus 1 counters that we've already seen so far, giving us an additional plus 1 counter at the beginning of combat each turn, can level it up to give those creatures a ward 1, and eventually we can start doubling our plus 1 counters as well. And then Hunter's Talent is one of the 8 removal spells in this deck. This one comes attached to an enchantment that can provide additional mana sinks in the late game to pump our creatures and then draw additional cards. And then we get to our 3 mana creatures where there's Scrap Shooter as another raccoon to grow the Might Caller. Has Reach, so pretty good against the red aggro decks where it can block a Slickshot show off in the air. And when it enters we can also destroy an artifact or enchantment if we gift the opponent a card. So it can be a nice answer to the red-white tokens decks. And then we've got a full set of Bloated Contaminator as another card to synergize with all the plus one plus one counters in the deck. As a 4-4 Trampler, when this hits the opponent, we get to proliferate, so we can add more plus one counters to our creatures, especially good with a leveled up Innkeeper's Talent. And we can also proliferate the oil counters on the Evolving Adaptive. And if we happen to have both oil counters and plus one counters, the Adaptive will grow even faster. And then uh, to make use of all these four-powered creatures, we're also playing the full set of Outcaster Trailblazer as a way to draw more cards in the grindier matchups whenever a creature with power four or greater enters. And we can also plot it, so maybe allows us to play around counter spells, or better, maybe not overextend into an opposing board wipe. And then when the Trailblazer enters, it also makes a mana, so we can use it to cast another one drop, or maybe by plotting it, we can cast multiple three drops in the same turn and draw additional cards of Trailblazer right away. And then our final removal spells include the full set of Heart Hitting Question. This one is Sorcery Speed, but doesn't actually fight, so it just deals damage to an opposing creature equal to the creature's power we target. And then a Tail Swipe can be an instant speed removal spell, so it can be more useful against Mono Red Aggro if we have a large enough creature to fight with in the first place. But uh, then we don't get the plus one plus one bonus, which only applies during our turn. And then our mana base includes four copies of Oak Hollow Village as another mana sink that can maybe grow our various raccoons, frogs or rabbits if they just enter the battlefield this turn and otherwise can still make green mana to cast our creature spells so it doesn't really bother us too much. But uh, we can't really afford to play cards like Mishra's Foundry in the mana base since we do need a lot of green mana early to cast all our one drops and the curator so having a colorless source would just get in the way. But uh, just 22 lands keep the curve nice and low hopefully we don't flood out and we get to to just curve out and uh, stomp the opponent. The theory behind this deck is that if decks are adjusting to beat mono red by including some two damage removal spells we can maybe go over the top with our three and four toughness creatures that can survive them and then hopefully back them up with removal to still have a chance against mono red. So yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay we're on the play we've got a fine hand. Got the one two three curve potentially. We'll see if we need Curator for Graveyard Hate in this matchup. I guess Moderat not so much. I'm not actually opposed to trading for Swiss Spear, since it's going to be kind of annoying later. 
That means we're playing Curator first, hopefully dodging a Lightning Strike. And then... I can go Talent level up, or maybe play the Trailblazer with Plot. Hardfire Hero. Can they give it haste? Just a scamp. Tail swipes, pretty important to keep up at instant speed as well. So maybe we do go talents and then keep up swipe as opposed to leveling up. And then I'll just play defense. Keeping swipe for a potential slick shot could also be important. Mainly hoping to get a favorable trade with a tail swipe. Polonius Rage, Trigger Valiance. And in response, Tail Swipe, that works. Take one damage and one more from Scamp. That worked out. And a Cell Sword just as a creature, 3 3. Drew another talent. So we have options. Can cast Trailblazer and another talent. That seems okay. And then put two counters on Trailblazer. Now the thing we want to avoid is blocking a Scamp, having them pump and then take out two of our creatures. But I guess we don't have to block the Scamp at 18. Can grow a Trailblazer twice. And might be able to just outrace them at this point. Hit for four. Trailblazer doesn't die to a Lightning Strike. And I'll just take it. Monstrous Rage to the Scamp. If they sack it to another Cell Sword, it's still only 8 damage, put me to 3. They're gonna take out the Curator instead. And I guess the Trailblazer. Alright, so our opponent's going for the controlling approach. Although if we draw a creature, we're gonna be able to grow it quite quickly. And a Might Caller will do. So it can play it. Activate Oak Hollow Village and level up uh, Talent as well. But yeah, goes to show how dangerous a Cell Sword can be with a Scamp. Opponent forced to pass it back. So we could level up the Talent all the way. Also don't hate just playing a second blocker here in case a Flyer shows up. So play Scrap Shooter, level up, and then where do we want to counters? Maybe make a 6-6 six, six Might Caller, so I can attack past double Cell Sword. I guess this will grow regardless from the Scrap Shooter, so I only need to put one counter on it. Although making it a 7-7 seven, seven would allow us to cleanly attack past a pair of 3-3s. Three yeah, this is a close decision. I think both of Might Callers fine. That way we threaten lethal next turn with a trampler. Opponent takes it. So now I just have to block and hope they don't have it. Playing a more passive game also maybe could have worked out. Where we just wait to level up the talent even more. So that's still a trade. Opponent can move the equipment, but... We're just gonna trample over the cell sword. So this should be game over. Eleven, eleven trample. All right, so yeah, this worked out. Managed to survive the cell sword, which our opponent was forced to use defensively, taking out several creatures. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. We have what looks like a keeper. Turn one, might caller. Can immediately grow it up to a two-two. And we're kind of all in here, facing red-white. Could be Boros tokens, yep. And hopefully they don't have some uh, three-mana sweeper lined up. I guess now with the Paw Patch Recruit, if I played with Offspring, can make this a 4-4. Four, four. 
Adaptive also grows. Could be better than playing Contaminator. So if they, let's say, have a Brotherhood's End, I would be left with Contaminator versus being left with a 4-4 Might Caller and then still a pair of 3 drops in hand. I think this is slightly better. Also gets more damage in this turn. The only drawback is that it's worse in the face of a Lockdown. But nowadays it's a bit of a coin flip whether our opponents are playing with Brotherhood's End or Temporary Lockdown. So our opponent trumps. Falls to 11. And they've got the Lockdown. Well, at least Scrap Shooter can give our creatures back. So that's not bad. Opponent also re-triggers the Carrot Cake. Normally a bit of a nombo, but kinda works out for them here. Opponent's got another one. Well, we can run it back. Attack for four firsts. And then hope they don't also have a Sunfall at five. Although by gifting a card we're making it more likely, Opponent also getting to surveil each time. And that's gonna be another lockdown. Alright, so just the scrap shooters left. Opponent probably has removal for one of them. Playing Recruit with Offspring, opponent's just going to respond, unless it's maybe removal that depends on a creature being attacking. Yeah, I guess playing Recruit's fine. What if our opponent tries to make a blocker with Virtue of Loyalty as a way to stay alive, then attacking with Tailswipe would make more sense. Alright, I guess we'll just start by attacking then. Opponent had to get lost anyway. And sure, we'll go with Contaminator. They didn't have Sunfall last turn. This is better in case they have more lockdowns. It's gonna be a Quintorius to try and stabilize. Hoping to hit a Sweeper. Finds a Soul Partition. Okay, so that's gonna trigger, gain two life, up to five, but uh, Tail Swipe can pump the Scrap Shooter. Problem is, we need a creature to target. Otherwise, we can't cast it, but we can also go exploring with the maps, and if we hit a non-land, we're good to go. It's a big moment here. Alright, Contaminator will do. And then I don't think there's a way they can interfere. And there we have it, triple lockdown, still doesn't get it done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a decent hand. One, two, three. This deck is all about curving out. And then Contaminator plays well with all the plus one counters we can potentially generate. Opponent on blue-green, maybe a ramp deck. It's gonna be a Wormlet, so blue-green artifact. Curator is now an option too, although getting the Innkeeper's Talent going might be better long-term for Contaminator. And this allows us to hit for three. Scrap shoot for an answer to a potential artifact. Opponent's got Sentinel. Gross Wormlets. But we could make Recruit a 4-3 here to at least trade for Sentinel. Now hard-hitting questions, not bad either. Let's see. Yeah, removing Sentinel can only really happen second main phase. So I think we just attack for four and then play a Contaminator which can block the Sentinel if it doesn't pick up a plus one counter. Don't expect them to trade here. And then hopefully next turn we can clear the Sentinel. So it's important here if they can find a, a non-land. Sentinel gets a free attack in, but it has a Larcenist as removal instead. At least gives us another plus one counter. And a Surge Engine will trigger Wormlet. Okay, so opponent's got most of their cards on the table. And 
we should have some good interaction lined up here. This has Ward 1, so could use Hard Hitting Question to take it out, get Contaminator back, and then still play another removal spell. Contaminator does not have Summoning Sickness either. And yeah, how about a Hunter's Talent here to clear Sentinel? And there we have it, plus one counter on Contaminator, attack for 10, proliferate, and our opponent's hopelessly behind. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We have what looks like a Keeper. A little slow to get started, perhaps, with no good turn 2 play. Yeah, maybe that still costs to Mulligan here. Although we are on the draw, so we're more likely to pick up something to fill the gap. And then Trailblazer isn't bad with Double Contaminator. I'll try it. Facing turn 1 Mountain, no surprises there. Curator's a good pickup, grows Mightcaller as well. But yeah, this is the dilemma. You're just never in a good position to block, so you just need removal as interaction and hope the opponent runs out of steam. At least no Manifold Mouse on two. And a Monster's Rage immediately hits us for five. And puts the hero out of range from a hard-hitting question as well. So play Curator, and then... Yeah, we can try to double block next turn. Still waiting for a third land. If we get it, we can also play Trailblazer and Hard Hitting Question in the same turn to maybe deal 4 damage. And a Felonious Rage for an extra plus 1 counter. Okay, so another Monstrous Rage would not add a second roll token. So the card we're concerned about now is something like a Dreadmoss Ire, which would pump toughness by 3 total. Opponent's gonna take to the skies with a Slick Shot. So if we can trade for Heartfire and then next turn remove Slick Shots, I'll be happy. But we still need an untapped land, I guess any land will do. And our opponent's gonna get another token out of the deal. And deal 7 on the way out, so... Yeah, it's gonna be rough. The draw land, so we have a chance at least. And then I think we just have to take out a Slick Shot, since otherwise any non-creature spell is lethal. At least we can still trade here, and hope to get there. So yeah, our draw couldn't have been much better. Might call her Curator, and then Trailblazer plus removal. And we're still pretty far behind at 3 life. So just goes to show how crazy these red decks have become. There was certainly a time where Mono Green used to beat Mono Red. And they've got an IR left over, still trade, take 2, fall to 1. All right, let's see if Triple Contaminator can go the distance. Another Slick Shot kills us. Now, probably looking at just Contaminator and one mana recruit. Gotta make sure we have blockers back at all times for an opposing haste creature. Alright, Tailswipe gives us a little bit of insurance, so attack, and uh, maybe next turn we'll get there. At least the saving grace is that our opponent's less likely to have a bunch of burn spells to close out the game, since they're more all in all the pump spells. We're also close to poisoning the opponent to death. Alright, let's see if Tailswipe can save us. Challenger is fine. Are they going to try and fling it right away with the Cell Sword? Then we can still respond. Okay, let's see what happens. No reason to let Prowess resolve. That dies. They still get the Valiant trigger to maybe find a burn spell. They do not, and we should get there. Wow. Doesn't get much closer than this. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a Keepable Hand. One, two, three. Contaminator, good with all the plus one counters. So there's a bit of synergy here. 
We'll see what our opponent's playing. Conduit Pylons. Alright, so it's definitely a more off-meta deck. I see, finding the third path, so it is a Reanimator-style deck. So we could see Squirming Emergence, bring back an Atraxa. So finding our Key Knight Curator to exile cards from Graveyard could be important. For now, play Mightcaller, level up the talent. Could have maybe reversed the sequencing there. And we'll make a 4-4, four, four, sure. So we've got the initial pressure. Playing Contaminator on 3 probably would have been better. As we see Tempest Heart discarding. Alright, never mind. It is the Ragdos joins up Metamorph build. So if our opponent has an Abuela's Awakening, they can just win on turn 4 if we don't find any relevant interaction. Hard hitting question is Sorcery Speed Removal, so it doesn't interfere if we had... Instant speed removal, we could potentially interact here. And we also don't have the mana to play Curator and activate it if we top deck one. So yeah, if our opponent has it, we die. If not, the game goes on. We're just gonna play Scrap Shooter. Can destroy Founding. Does it do anything for me? Prevents them from milling four cards. I guess I'm better off with Contaminator. Although, let's see. If I play Scrap Shooter, I do get to grow both Might Callers, so then we're maybe applying a little bit more pressure more quickly. But I don't think there's a reason to destroy the enchantments since they already have both cards they need in Graveyard, and that would just help them draw towards the Abuela's Awakening, if that's what they're missing. Alright, we're hitting for 8, so next turn we would be presenting Lethal, but we'll see if our opponent's got a turn 4 combo. I wouldn't be shocked. And looks like it here. Yep, opponent going through the graveyard, Abuela's Awakening, back Arachdos joins up. Which now reanimates the Metamorph, which copies Arachdos joins up. It is a legendary, so they sacrifice one. Arachdos joins up, still triggers, getting back another Metamorph. A rinse and repeat. And we die. That's a combo that saw play in the previous standard. It did lose some pieces. You don't have those cheap surveil and draw discard effects from Innistrad, but uh, that can still very much win on turn four. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have some removal, hopefully two into three. Uh, Trailblazer first into Scrap Shooter would be good. Yeah, no one mana creature is a bit of a setback, but I don't think it's bad enough to mulligan. When it is on a red with Heartfire Hero. And did find a third land. So now going Trailblazer, leftover mana cast a hard hitting question could be good. So I don't necessarily want to trade off the curator here. Opponent's a red green. And an innkeeper's talents. So this will be a 3 3, that's fine. Still dies to 3 damage. And then Scrap Shooter is the perfect answer to an innkeeper's talent. Could also use a Trailblazer to deal 4 damage instead. But it's not an actual fight, so that's the important part. And next turn we'll have another very efficient turn. Scrap Shooter plus another hard hitting question, and that might just be too much for the opponent to overcome, especially on the draw. The talent can be pretty strong alongside the various Valiant creatures from Bloomborough, as we see Challenger can trigger Valiant, but they wanted to keep mana available. And the Questing Druid's gonna go to waste. So we're just gonna take it. And then next turn we should be able to take out the Challenger. Assuming they pump it now. Monstrous Rage, so... Opponent gets in for 7 damage, that's not bad. But a 4-4 still dies. And our opponent's gonna be left with nothing. For what it's worth, we could also destroy the opponent's roll token with a Scrap Shooter. But that's not going to be necessary. Take out the talent.
And hit you for seven. And next turn we could keep drawing more cards with Trailblazer. Opponent's not out of it yet, but they will need something special. Technically, if they have some sort of Act of Treason effect to steal my creature and have another Monstrous Rage, we die. But haven't seen those played before, at least not in these decks. It's gonna be another Challenger. I imagine we're forced to block it. And a Heartfire Hero. And a Swiss Spear, so lots of blockers. If they're out of pump spells, that's fine by me, since our opponent's gonna be forced to chum block and we can extract more value out of the Trailblazer first. And that'll do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We do not have any creatures, so can't really keep. This is better. And then even though there's a risk we flood out, I think I still keep all three lanes. Opponent on the red. Not our favorite matchup, but at least we're on the play. Yeah, there used to be a time where Mono Green would be one of the worst matchups for Mono Red, but since this is more of a combo deck as opposed to really a creature aggro deck, as we see here, having a larger creature than the opponent just no longer is good enough to stop them. So we can play a Contaminator, put a counter on it, and then next turn, Scrap Shooter. Plus Tail Swipe is a 5-5, enough of a roadblock to discourage an attack. Opponent grows Heartfire Hero, so that's going to deal 5 damage on the way out. Problem is, if I take it, we just die to a uh, Cell Sword flinging it. But yeah, let's assume I block, then our opponent still deals at least 7 damage. And then if they have a Cell Sword, they could deal 3 more, put me to 3, versus block Swift Spear. So I'm kind of forced to block the Heartfire Hero, I think. And then they can still Monstrous Rage the Swift Spear. We fall to two. They do not have Cell Sword to finish us off right now. All right, so there's still a little bit of hope. Play Scrap Shooter. Do we destroy Bane Splitter or Monster Roll? Letting them draw a card feels pretty bad. So maybe we just uh, let them keep it. If they equip an attack, I can block for them to play Pump Spell and Tail Swipe. So I can't afford to level up the talents, but we can do it twice next turn, potentially. Their opponent equips. Hopefully they attack. They're gonna try and sell Sword. Now we can respond. That's different from Fling. So now they don't deal damage, and they cannot cast a Cell Sword. Now the problem is any haste creature they draw is lethal, but I also need to make sure we can close out the game before they find some uh, lethal burn spell. So I think the best course of action is level up twice, get two counters, and then next turn we can play another one. And hope they don't have haste creature here. What if I hang back? Then we don't die to Swiss Spear. We're also in trouble against another Heartfire Hero or Cacophony Scam, since they can just equip those, and then if they die, we lose the game. So we are potentially removing a few of the opponents out, like Swiss Spear, by staying back. I guess there's also the uh, Slickshot Show-Off, which could otherwise potentially kill me if they have a fifth land to equip it. What's the goal with staying back? Basically building up Scrap Shooter so we can maybe one-hit KO the opponent or find at least a second creature. So there are arguments for both. Next turn, if I play another talent, I can at most level it up once. So we get four plus one counters. This grows up to 11. So it's still not quite lethal over the course of two turns. Yeah, a very difficult spot. I think I do attack and try and get there in three turns. Land is fine, but a Challenger is now lethal. Yeah, that's rough. Although Challenger plus Bane Splitter is still a way for them to trigger Valiant each turn and find another Fling Effect or Burn Spell to kill me. And there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a keepable hand. Turn one Adaptive, turn two Recruit plus maybe a Tail Swipe. Opponent also with a Recruit.
could make adaptive into a 3-3 with tail swipe if we main phase it. Need to make sure to uh, keep green mana available for it. Opponent on green white rabbits makes sense. And a Phineas. Probably something we want to remove before it gets too large. Now this will grow with the uh, Paw Patch recruits. But that's the cost of doing business. And I don't mind offering the trade. Opponent accepts. Alright. So I'm going to play Contaminator next. Which could have grown Adaptive even more. But we also have more removal coming up to target their stuff. Opponent going my Caller plus Recruits. We've got a lot of the same creatures. And I'll offer the trade. The opponent's more of a critical mass deck where... The more rabbits they have, the better. We don't really care. And a quest caller is a good target for Hunter's Talent. Even though it will trigger the Recruit once again, I guess I could just play another Contaminator or a Trailblazer, which maybe makes more sense so we can start drawing. And then even if they play another quest caller, I can still take it out. Yeah, I guess plotting is fine here. Since we don't need the 4-2 in play right away. Opponent does have another quest caller, so now we definitely need to take them out before they get too large. And our opponent can maybe set up an attack now. But they don't. Alright, so Trailblazer makes a mana. Although am I going to use that mana? Because I think we do need to Hunter's Talents. If we level it up, we can also start pumping our creatures. But yeah, we don't get to pump before the fight, we fight right away. So currently don't have a way to make a 5-5. Five -five. Other than Scrap Shooter, Activate Village, which is not a guarantee. So yeah, I think we should play the Talent. And then... Yeah, going Trailblazer into another 3-drop makes sense. As opposed to leveling this up. Our opponent does have a 3-4 and a 4-4 back on defense. Found an Innkeeper's Talent. That's going to be great with a Contaminator. Do I offer the trade for a Might Caller right now? It is only going to get bigger, so I think I'm fine with that trade. Nothing to proliferate. Other than the Poison. But at least we've got a bit of late game here with uh, various class enchantments to hopefully go over the top. Opponent's still happy to hang back. Another Trailblazer to draw. We'll make mana, so we can still play the Talents. And even level it up. So do we want to attack now? Our opponent would be more likely to trade, since otherwise we get to proliferate, but alright, our opponent has seen enough. Since, yeah, next turn we could level up the talent even more, start doubling the counters, and eventually our creatures will get larger than the opponent's, and we can take over on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, we have a keepable hand. Facing turn 1 planes, so adaptive, turn 2... Could maybe double spell recruit and a removal spell if needed. Or we can get the talent going. Opponent on carrot cake, so maybe a tokens deck. Could be mono white, could be red white. Found a might caller. So yeah, question is, do we want to play around an effect like temporary lockdown? That card's going to be good against us no matter what. Thing going might caller into recruit still makes the most sense. Applies the most pressure. And then we can follow it up with a Contaminator, which can proliferate all these counters. If our opponent jumps, then we suspect a Sweeper, but opponent takes it, so that's promising. And they are on red-white, so no double red for Brotherhood's End yet. Don't know if they're on the Brotherhood's End version, or a Lockdown, or potentially neither. 
Can certainly expect author removal spells at 5 mana. There's Sunfall, of course. But I think this is our best chance to get the Contaminator going. Grows the Adaptive. And then, don't think Recruit wants to necessarily attack and trade. If they want to double block the Might Caller, so be it. Odin takes it. So now the Innkeeper's Talents with Contaminator could set up for a very sweet turn. Can play it, level up for wards, and still cast a hard hitting question. And a caretaker's talent, we don't really mind. Their opponents can be tapped out. Although we do have to watch out for Sunfall now, as a way for the opponent to catch back up and draw more cards. And yeah, that's not going to be an easy card for us to beat if they have it. But uh, this is all we can do for now. Level up. And then if I hard hit in question, we get to clear one token, and then where to put the counter from talent, probably on a creature that doesn't already have a counter, so we get to proliferate it. Putting it on adaptive still works, since the oil counters and plus one counters are different, but this one doesn't trample, so maybe growing the recruit up to a 3-2 makes sense. And then yeah, let's just clear one token. And then we'll see how they block. They're chumping adaptive, so that's points towards a sweeper, although then they also would have chumped with the rabbit, most likely. Don't sunfall me, please. Alright, well, they had it. So by saving the rabbits, they got a slightly larger incubator. Key Knight Curator the draw. Can play it, and then start exiling stuff from Graveyard. Copying the Incubator is not going to do anything for our opponent, since it's just a 0-0. Zero, zero. Opponent's got to get lost. So do we want to exile stuff from Graveyard? Probably best to leave it in the Graveyard for a future Curator. Don't think there's any reason to get rid of anything. All right. And our opponent's keeping up two mana as opposed to getting in with Incubator. Maybe afraid of a haste creature. At least I had to use Get Lost on a creature instead of my Innkeeper's Talent. So now if we draw a creature, we can make it quite large. Although we're going to have to draw one soon. Opponent can level up the talents to give their tokens plus two plus two. They've got another one. Although again, leveling that one up doesn't do much. The Forge's not bad. And our opponent draws two. So yeah, this was going to be a tough matchup if our opponent had the Sunfall, and they did. And they get to keep the 1-1. One, one. And we did not draw creatures, so yeah, now we should be just dead. Opponent can level up talents and attack all out. All right, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a keeper. Turn one, probably going for Might Caller. Turn two, could uh, start with Innkeeper's Talent, or if we pick up another one drop, we could double spell. Opponent on red aggro. Currently don't have much removal, so that could be a problem. Cacophony Scamp is next. And an attack for one. So yeah, I'm leaning Innkeeper's Talent for now. And then I'll stay back, even though I don't really plan to block next turn necessarily. Maybe that's just reason to get in there for two. Because, yeah, blocking's not going to work too well in the face of Scamp. I guess right now they could also just trade the Scamp. So I don't necessarily want that either. So yeah, we'll pass. And then next turn, we've got a few more options available. 
Bone's got the Bane Splitter. Thirteen we go. And no follow-up. Curator gives us another decent body. So we could go Recruit plus Curator, make this potentially up to a 5-5, five five, or we could spread the counters around a bit more. Playing this with Offspring would also be reasonable here. But uh, let's go for the extra power and toughness right now. And then, yeah, I could be convinced to grow the Curator. Problem being that our opponent then probably trades Scamp for both Curator and Mightcaller if they pump it up some more. So maybe I just plan to put the Recruit in front of the Scamp. And then they trade for those two. So then maybe I'm happy just having a 5-5 Mightcaller. Or I can grow the Curator anyway. That way, at least I need to use a pump spell on the Scamp to trade for both. The alternative would be to just ignore the Scamp instead of trying to trade for it. But I feel like the Scamp is just a ticking time bomb. So the sooner we deal with it, the better. So yeah, if I block with Curator, they pump, take out Curator and my Caller. Whereas here, I think this makes more sense. Now I guess they could potentially pump Swiss Spear to take out the Curator. But if they have two pump spells and trade for everything, I think we're still fine with that. So Monstrous Rage will trample over, but we still trade. So they can deal six damage. Do they go face to kill me? Nope, they take out my caller. So we're left with a curator at eight life, and I like those odds. So now could go Trailblazer, cast another talents, or we can level one of them up and maybe plot a Trailblazer for now. So we'll have access to more mana on the following turn. Hang back for one more turn. Just gotta watch out for a slick shot flying over. Alright, and now Hunter's Talent can take out the Swiss Spear. We can level up talent all the way. Hit you for seven. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. All right, so we got to see our mono green Stompy deck in action. And even though we featured some very close games against mono red that we eventually managed to win, I think that matchup still heavily favors the red deck, especially the builds with Callous Cell Sword, since there's so many permutations that allow the opponent to win on turn three, even through us having multiple blockers. So we specifically need a large enough creature and an instant speed tail swipe to be able to interact, and that's just not very likely to happen. So yeah, if that matchup doesn't favor us, then it's not a great time to be playing mono green in the best of one ladder especially so maybe it's about time we get lanor elves in foundations to strengthen the green archetype although i'm doubtful that mono green is necessarily going to be the best home for it although casting one of these three drops on turn two certainly sounds appealing so until then i would keep mono green stompy on the shelf but uh, for now i want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day